If you think a quick meal can't be delicious, then great news, because I've got three amazing dishes that are gonna prove you wrong. Today I'm gonna run you through three pasta dishes that are not only delicious, but they're full of flavor, and they're only made in one pot. So whether you're short on time, you're cooking on a budget, or you're just after something delicious and comforting, these one pot pastas will get the job done. A huge thank you to Maiden for sponsoring this video. More on that later, but let's get stuck in. So first up, I'm gonna do a little lamb meatball with some fettuccine, all in one pot. And a little caveat, I often do things very traditional. This is not one of those videos. This is my interpretation of, of pasta dishes. So make of that what you will. First of all, some lamb mince. You want something with a bit of fat in it. And if you don't know what kind of the CC rating is or the, or the, the fat to lean ratio, ask your butcher or look for something that has some, a decent amount of white speckles. To that, we're gonna add some breadcrumbs and some milk. Now, traditionally, if you're making a meatball like this, you'd kind of make this first but we're trying to make it as few of this year as possible. So we're gonna just kind of bang it all in together. A little bit of dried oregano, a pinch of salt, and some ground black pepper. And then with a clean hand, we're just gonna mix all that through. We don't wanna work this too much or we'll start kind of making effectively like a sausage mince because what will happen is you'll emulsify the fat into the rest of the, of the lean meat. It becomes quite bouncy. And the reason that you put breadcrumbs and milk in there isn't to bulk it out, it's actually to stop it from drying out. The milk hydrates the breadcrumbs, and then you end up with a more moist meatball at the end. But that's all the mixing, that's what we're looking for. That's more than enough. So in the interest of not making many dishes, we're gonna make our meatballs and put them straight into a pan. So I've got a stainless clad pan here, and I'm gonna turn it onto a high heat. I'm gonna add a decent drizzle of olive oil. When cooking with stainless, you want to make sure, well, cooking in anything, you want to make sure the pan's hot before you put any food in it. So in the meantime, I'm just going to start getting some of these balls ready and leave them in the side. I don't want huge meatballs here. We're not after massive tennis ball size. Kind of, I guess, half the size of a golf ball, which isn't that big, really. And they don't need to be perfect. We're not, you know, we're not cooking three Michelin star food here. So while you're waiting for that to heat up, grab a small amount, roughly roll them into a ball and leave them to the side. Okay, our pan's hot. We can see our oil starting to smoke a little bit, and the meatballs go. When you're placing your meatballs in, put them in like a, a circle motion, because that way it's gonna be easier to know where to start flipping them. So I'm using the Maiden stainless clad collection here. They're crafted in Italy and used by professional chefs all over the world, including three Michelin star restaurants and my home. <laughs> so we just want some nice browning on the outside of these meatballs. I'm gonna turn that temperature right down because we're getting great color there. The only other thing we need to prep is some little cherry tomatoes in half, which we're gonna to add to the pan, and some garlic. So all I'm gonna do here is just cut these cherry tomatoes in half. And I like using cherry tomatoes in one pot dishes because they, they don't take as long to cook and they're like a nice little pop of flavor. And I'm just gonna peel this garlic and roughly chop it. Add our cherry tomatoes to the pan. Turn that heat back up. Also add our garlic, start cooking that down. Man, that lamb smells delicious. So we've already seasoned the meatballs, but we are gonna add another little pinch of salt now as well. Continue to cook that down. The other thing we're gonna add is a cup, or well, a tablespoon of a crushed chili, like an Italian crushed chili paste. If you don't have an Italian crushed chili, then just finely dice one of the long red chilies and chuck it in there. I got two tins of whole peeled tomatoes, and they go. And then I filled the cans up half up with water again. It's gonna feel like the sauce is very wet. However, we're cooking our pasta in here. The pasta is gonna absorb some of that sauce. So we need to make sure that there's enough liquid in there for the pasta to cook and for the sauce to be the right consistency at the end. But we'll just break up these whole tomatoes. You can use chopped tomatoes as well if you want. It's probably a little bit easier, to be perfectly honest. I'm gonna let that cook for eight to 10 minutes before we add our pasta. I'm gonna use fettuccine, fresh fettuccine. This is just from the supermarket, I haven't made it. And the reason we use this is it only, it's only gonna take three or four minutes to cook. So we wanna make sure that our lamb meatballs are pretty much cooked through, our, you know, our tomatoes are cooked through before we add the pasta and start stirring it through. So we'll let this come up to a simmer, cook it down for a few more minutes before we add our pasta, check for seasoning, and we're good to go. How simple is that? So this has been simmering for about five, six minutes now. And it's still looking quite saucy, but that's okay. This, like I was saying, this pasta is gonna absorb some of this. Spread this pasta out and then carefully try and mix it in. You wanna make sure that the sauce is boiling or simmering when you're doing this. 
uh, to stop the pasta from sticking to each other. And then just take your time trying to fold the pasta through. If you do find that the pasta absorbs way more moisture than you thought, just add a little bit of water. So the packet said three minutes for this pasta to cook. I reckon it's gonna take more like four, just cause you're not getting the, uh, like a full immersive boiling water that you normally would when you're cooking pasta. Get it stirred through and then let it kind of do its thing. Four minutes later and we are good to go. The only other thing we're gonna do, turn the heat off. I'm gonna put some basil through here and I'm gonna toss it a little bit. So start to finish, that took 27 minutes, which is pretty respectable in my opinion. Do the old fancy twirl. Some of the metaballs, fresh parmesan, Some basil to garnish. Pretty good for half an hour and not many dishes. How does it taste? Mm. Well, that's delicious. And I think it ticks most of the boxes. Was it quick? Well, it took half an hour. That's as long as any of the recipes we're gonna talk about today. And that feels pretty reasonable for me. Is it cheap? Well, the lamb minx can be a little bit more expensive as far as mince is concerned, but I don't think it's like crazy unaffordable. Simple, absolutely. That was not a hard thing to pull together. And comforting, ding, 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 ding. That is a hug in a bowl. Delicious. Next up, a pasta that is full of flavor and really is quite quick to pull together. It's kind of a puttanesca, but I'm too scared to call it puttanesca because the comment section might go wild. It's not really puttanesca because we're cooking the pasta slightly differently, so. This is uh, Andy's spaghetti with olives, anchovies, garlic, chili, capers, parsley, and tomato. <laughs> Put a pan over a high heat. We're gonna add a good couple of tablespoons of olive oil. I love making this dish when it's just me eating alone or uh, it's just me and Caitlin quick like Sunday lunch. Most of this, these stuff I either have in my garden or I've got in my pantry ready to go. So it's like one of those amazing pantry staples dish. The only real difference, like I said, is that normally you'd cook the pasta separately in boiling water, but sometimes I just want to use one pan and I think it works perfectly well. So oil's in, it's not actually that hot yet, but we're going to add our anchovies in. And if you don't like anchovies, just leave them out. No stress. But it is one of those dishes that it really does help to have the anchovies in there and you don't really taste them in the end. So we're just gonna bring those anchovies up to temperature and you kind of want them to melt down and break down a little bit. I'm gonna add the garlic and the sliced red chili. Then this is one tin of tomatoes, crushed. Add that in, give that a stir. A small pinch of salt because those anchovies will be nice and salty. At this point, we add our pasta. Now this is kind of a variation on Harold McGee's technique on cooking pasta where you even don't even need to worry about it bringing up, coming up to temperature or boiling. Just put that in there like that. The heat of the tomato will slowly start to soften that pasta. We're gonna add more water as we needed. Now you can see here that pasta is already starting to melt. I have added some more water and we just wanna keep stirring it and cook this pasta for however long this is in the packet, which I reckon is usually about eight to 10 minutes. Just make sure you also keep stirring it so we don't want the pasta to stick together. So this is another one of Maiden's stainless clad collection. Now I love this collection because of its five ply stainless steel. It helps with heat retention and even heating. So everything cooks evenly, no hot spots. Plus the handle is designed to stay cool on the stovetop, which is super handy for multitasking like this. So the trick to making this work really well is just controlling the amount of liquid and water in there. You only want just enough at the end that you've got enough sauce to cover the, the, uh, the pasta or the spaghetti, but you don't want too much that's too wet. So it's uh, just little bits at a time, keep reducing, keep cooking your pasta, stirring often. So while that's just doing its thing over there, I'm just gonna chiffonade this parsley. You can be as rough or as fine as you want with this. I don't want it too fine or I think it gets lost, so. Well, our pasta's pretty much cooked. I'm gonna add our olives and capers, and then we'll stir those through. Maiden's Kitchenware is not just used by the pros, but it's also loved by home cooks. It's crafted in partnership with multi-generational artisans and designed for the home cooker mind. If you're looking for professional quality cookware, then check out the Stainless Clad Collection and Maiden's other collections by using the link in description to save on your order. Now let's get this pasta plated up. The only other thing we need to do before we finish it is just toss through that parsley that we chopped up earlier. Let's have a taste. Mm, delicious. That is all of those things. Quick, simple, it's budget friendly, 
and it's absolutely delicious. And for my final dish, linguine. So again, we're gonna use a fresh linguine from the refrigerator part of the supermarket. Some smoked trout. Now you wanna use a hot smoked fish here, not a cold smoked one. I find the cold smoked one when you cook it gets a bit weird. So this is a hot smoked trout that are just nice big flakes. Two bunches of asparagus, because asparagus is in season at the moment here in Australia, and it's delicious. And lots of lemon. So I've got two big lemons there. I'd use three if they weren't this big. There's asparagus. I'm gonna take the heads off and then we're gonna cut it into fairly small pieces. Roughly one centimeter, just yeah, about one centimeter big. Then I've got one of the large 12 inch fry pans on with about two centimeters of water in it. So that is gonna cook our asparagus. It's also gonna cook our linguine. But like all the other dishes, we need to control the amount of water we got in there. So we want enough to cook the pasta and the, and the veg. We want it nice and starchy, because then we're gonna emulsify all that lemon juice in it. And it should be quite zingy, this. Zingy, what a word. So while our water is boiling or starting to boil, we're just gonna zest our lemons and keep that to one side, because we'll put that through the pasta at the end. But we do want to use the juice. So it's easier to zest these before we juice them. All that lovely zest to one side, Cut these lemons in half, ready for when we need them. Now our water has just started to simmer. Pinch of salt. I'm gonna add our asparagus. We're just gonna cook that for one minute. Okay, so that asparagus is cooked for a minute. We're gonna add our fresh linguine. I'm gonna cook that for three or four minutes and we're kind of looking for most of the liquid to evaporate while we're cooking this pasta. When you're cooking pasta in this technique, which I guess you could call like a risotto technique with evaporation, it can surprise you how much water pasta will absorb. So at the start, if you're like, oh gosh, there's too much water in here, just chill, it doesn't matter. If, if at the end you still feel like the pasta's cooked and you've got too much water, you can just kind of tip a little bit out. But it's better to have too much than not enough, I guess. Okay, this has been cooking for about four minutes now, and it's looking great. Although, let's be honest, there's not heaps of flavor in here yet. So we're gonna add our trout. This won't take long now. We really gotta kinda of make sure we don't overcook this. Lots of lemon juice. We're gonna start with one lemon and then we're gonna taste it. Our zest and we're gonna to toss. Look how creamy that looks and there's nothing, there's no dairy in there, nothing. And there's not even any olive oil in there. We are gonna have a good drizzle of olive oil and emulsify that in. That should turn it from kind of this dull glossiness to quite a shiny glossiness. All right, we'll have a taste. What does it need? Oh, not much. It can handle a bit more lemon juice. Oh, we'll just give it one last toss to get time to serve. Make sure we get lots of that asparagus and trout on there. Mm. Mm. I don't know if it's because we're coming into summer here where we live right now, but that's my favorite of the day. This, like Sunday afternoon, little siesta afterwards, delicious. So this one took me like 12 minutes to pull together. So is it quick? Absolutely. Is it delicious? Absolutely. Is it comforting? Absolutely. Is it affordable? Smoke trout's not cheap, I'm not gonna lie. Probably not affordable. But you could just replace the smoke trout with some good quality tin tuna or tin salmon. Yum, there you go. Three one pot passes, all well under half an hour to make. It shouldn't completely break the budget and it'll nourish your friends and family. Thank you all so much for watching. Like this video if you took anything from it. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. And a huge thank you once again to Maiden for sponsoring this video. We'll see you next week for another recipe. Peace.